we please welcome the gorgeous Helena Bonham Carter. Doesn't Helen look great? I love your outfit. Oh, thank S you. Sit oh. yourself down. Um, <laughs> hey, you, uh, you know, I love the way you dress. Do I think you? You look absolutely You're probably young. the only person in the world. I suspect, what? I mean, it's a small group. Because it is a small group. Often we see you photographed out and about, and it's eccentric, it's unique, it's very much your own style. Yeah, I um, guess so. These are some photographs. Well, that's a very, not quite a normal looking thing, apart from the glasses there. Yeah, they're that's not bad. But that's, that's quite unusual. That's bigger than Westwood. Yeah, but you know, you, you, and you wear it very well. That's uh, I like that. What's wrong with that? No, nothing's wrong with it. I like <laughs> all of it. Don't get defensive. Yeah. But I'm sure a lot of people do think that you dress a bit like someone who hasn't got a mirror or a light bulb. You know what I mean? It's kind of like... <laughs> I, I get the same <laughs> accusations, Helen. I, I love what you No, but I love the way you dress because it is so... And, uh, you know, everyone seems to follow, more often than not, what's dictated to them in magazines. No, I and definitely don't do that. Yeah. And, and basically, when I get dressed, I dress up. I guess I sort of treat it like a costume and, that, and I think most of us do as women, we sort of buy something and by putting something on you think you're going to transform into this different Become a thing different and person. then you see the photo and you realise you haven't. But in your head and in your mirror at home, which is dully lit, it's true, <laughs> it looks fantastic and, the, but, and then, but then all these magazines that take photos of you, they are out to make you look horrific. Horrible, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. And then, but I tell you, if you come to my home and see me in the room and in them and Tim's you know Tim's got an eye now how do this is Tim Burton who is your yeah. he's not your husband he's your partner your yeah. kind of living partner lovey boy good as yeah. I'm his mistress okay but, there um, he's there because he has a unique sense of dressing as well yeah. he looks to me like he looks like Bob Dylan with with an eye problem a bit there. Bob Dylan. <laughs> somebody thought he was Bob Dylan actually. he's Dylan-esque but does he um not vet so he but does he approve of the do you say what does this look like should I go at this and he goes maybe that's a bit much or do you ever listen or yeah I do sometimes he um He'll vet me just before I leave, and then he'll take something one off, one one thing off me. Because you like a lot of things. Or? I do like excess. I do like lots of things. I mean, what's the point of buying them if you don't wear them Absolutely. all at once? But but, but no, <laughs> never never more than three hats at any one time, Helen. <laughs> no, three. Well, I don't know. It is true. My mum did remind me once that I only had one head. And did I you have more than one hat on? I had several. And <laughs> lots of glasses. In but but he says on the whole that I wear one thing too many and. And that's probably tactful. I've said that to my wife, but she was wearing a bikini at the time, so she objected. <laughs> hey, we're talking clothes here. Pay some attention, or you're never coming shopping with us again. I'm getting, I'm getting tennis tips. <laughs> uh, okay. Hey, now we just saw Helena Bonham Carter in uh, a room with the view, of course, which is many years ago. Oh no, that's years ago. Do you, do you like watching yourself on screen? Do you no, watch I your finished it. movies back? No, I hate watching. Why do you hate? What do you not like? About I don't know. It? I think the basic thing is that you get into acting. Well, I do to try and sort of. Um, pretend to be somebody else and then when you see it at the end of the day you realize it's you it's a bit like putting on fun clothes or you think that you're going to transform yourself and then ultimately you look at the screen and you still think I'm just indelibly me so but I'm is that even in, even in roles that are far removed from you like uh, a movie you're in Planet which I love was the only one that well, uh, Planet of, the Apes. Yeah. well of course Planet of the Apes is a long yeah, way from you <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah there you go I think yeah even your mother wouldn't yeah. recognize you there <laughs> no, I do she's things. the one in the middle with the bald head by the way <laughs> you're wrong, right? it's a lot of makeup did you enjoy making that film? Um, did I enjoy being it? being a monkey? A monkey. I liked um, not looking like me. Uh, it was four hours of makeup every day. We'd have to wake up like the first makeup call was one thirty um, in the morning. That's ridiculous. Um, and then the thing that I did, I, lo I loved going to ape school. I had to go to ape school. Before. Now this is where you learn to be a monkey if you are going to be a monkey in a movie or perhaps yeah. a drama yeah. production of some sort. So what do they teach you? How to stand? How to move? How to yeah. think like a monkey? That's good. <laughs> like that, isn't it? No. <laughs> That's quite good, I know. No, the thing is, I think... You but you're being a chimp, I'm being a dominant male gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> really? It's good that you told me. <laughs> I can't remember. It did, end, it did end up being quite useful going to ape school, and I can't remember why, but a lot of it was concentration. It was like, I actually failed ape school because they said that I was Hold not on. good concentration. How do you fail? Well, they have a test at the end, doesn't they? Yeah. Well, like a pro an ape proficiency test. Yeah. <laughs> Um, let me ask you about the new movie you're making with Tim Burton next, which is, I believe you're filming at the moment. Yeah, Sweeney. Which is Sweeney Todd, the Stephen Sondheim musical. And this is the musical being translated to the screen for the first time, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, now, what's his plans for that? And you're playing who in that? And, and what's going on with that movie? It's a musical of, Tim, of uh, Stephen Sondheim, Sweeney Todd. And uh, Johnny Depp plays Sweeney. I play Mrs. Lovett. And um, he basically is a serial murderer. 
and I make pies out of You make um, pies out of the people. Uh, and it's people. got some great weird songs in it, of course, isn't it? It's a brilliant. I've been to see the musical any number of times. I love it. Yeah. No, I love it. I've always loved it. I've loved it since I was about 11. In fact, I've always wanted to be Mrs. Lovett, so it's a complete dream come true. So even when you were a child, you liked the idea of making pies from human flesh? Yeah. <laughs> in fact, that's weird, because like, when I went up for the part, my uh, great friend of mine, Deb, said, like, well, of course you're going to get it. And I said, well, not necessarily at all. In fact, it was a close run thing. And uh, she, she said, well, I said, why? And he said, well, because we called you Mrs. Lovett. And I had it, apparently I went around with Mrs. Lovett hairdos when I was 11. So, so obviously this is like, it, for me, it is a real dream. When did you start being a strange person? Like <laughs> because, no, no, because you are quite a strange person, in a charming way, but you are an unusual person. Oh, thank you, Jonathan. <laughs> um, I guess when I popped out of the womb, I suppose. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I've never thought I was strange, so... Yeah, but um, if you were going around dressing like Mrs. Lovett when you were 11, yeah. which is great, I love that, you know, yeah, but it is really unusual. I, I mean, do you come from a theatrical family? Your parents no, not probably? at all. Well, I think my mother innately, as a character, might be somewhat theatrical because she's, right. she's foreign. Um, oh, well, that's it, say no more. Uh, <laughs> Where is she from? What part of the world? She's half French, half Spanish. Oh, well, that's a nice mix, I want to imagine. Yeah, it's a great mix. And, and then she's got a bit of Russian in there and a bit of... Uh, Austrian, Jewish. Oh, yeah. yeah, she's a complete I think she's, she's a fantasist. She's invented this past. She claims to come from every part yeah. of Europe. She has. Yeah, she really has. She is a mongrel. Was it a bohemian upbringing? I mean, did they let you do more or less what you wanted? Was it there a freedom like that that you think you, um, you enjoyed? No. No. We were brought up in Golders Green. It was very normal, uh, um, I think. Um, background and upbringing. Yeah. You can't really remember a lot about your part. <laughs> I think, I think well, we need another so session, to be honest with you, before we can start making any progress, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. <laughs> uh, anyway, can I ask how old you are? I'm 41. 41? You look yeah. incredible for 41. Thank you. And I'm guessing from here, you, don't have, you haven't had any work done for the no, little I things? No, Wow, fantastic. Well, congratulations. Thank you, Fran. Thank you very much. Now That's my mum. I mean, mum looks great. No, never mind your mum. Now's the time you said something nice about me. Yeah. You do look great. He does look great, actually. He does. Doesn't he look great? Yeah. Rob, yeah. Rob, yeah. don't I look good for my age? I think you look fantastic, and I mean that sincerely. Yeah. You look great. <laughs> and as an older man, you would know, wouldn't you? <laughs> Greg and I have very large chins, but we do just have the one. <laughs> That's not nice, is that? That's not nice. Hey, what are you laughing at? You like, put that beer down. <laughs> how old are you, fellas, Bob? Who's the, how old is the youngest? How old are you, the little one in the blue thing? 19. <laughs> yeah, the hoodie. What, how old are you? 19. I can't, haggis? <laughs> <laughs> and he's got knits as well. Get the light cleaning. <laughs> hey, Helena. Yeah. This way. Sorry. Helena. Yeah. <laughs> Helena. You have, a, you have a little boy, I believe. Yeah. How old is he and what's his name? He's three. How what a lovely age. Three. I know, it's fantastic. He's called Billy. Little yeah. boy called Billy. And you have, I believe, what would seem to many people quite unusual living arrangements. Is this correct? You and your partner and the baby? It's fantastic. I okay. mean, I live, I suppose what you're alluding to is the fact that we live next door to each other. Okay, so, right? so yeah, so you're in a, a, a relationship, a loving, caring, trusting, nurturing, supportive relationship. Yes. And physical, no doubt. Well, Billy does suggest that. It. Yeah. And yet you live in two separate houses. Yeah. Well, originally they were separate. Now I could say that they are joined. So they're, they're next door to each other. They're next door to each other. But they are joined by this um, this room. When, when I got pregnant, um, we started building this little room to join the two, so we wouldn't have to go inside and outside. Because of course, Billy's in Tim's house because I didn't have enough rooms. Well, in hold my... on. Hold on. But you could have just moved in together, couldn't you? Most no. people would say, you know what, we've got two houses here, we're going to get together now. Yeah. Let's sell them and get a house together, one house, yeah. the family house. Yeah, stupid. Not, let's knock a tunnel through. Yeah. <laughs> like we're trying to get out of Coldix, <laughs> maybe in a broom cupboard. Drawbridge. You know, it's fantastic. I love it. So you, you live separate lives, but you're together all the time? Or no, what we it? live pretty much. I mean, we're like pretty much most... I mean, our houses look like just like one house now with no cohesion whatsoever with interior design so, so, hard, so you've got I've your got a nice house. tasteful side and then his side is sort of it's a bit well he says it's like James Bond but I'm not sure um, let me guess your side you have more curtains and cushions yeah his side I don't you have, have any more curtains. plug sockets and small mobile tellies. phone type devices he's got plug. lots of tellies everywhere yeah, that sounds like a good side to be on yeah that's the male and female side of the house right there plug holes did you say yes plug holes <laughs> why plug holes to plug things into what do you think <laughs> <laughs> oh she's filthy <laughs> Do you, but do you have separate bedrooms or one bedroom in one side of the We've house? We've got uh, two bedrooms and we can choose. So would there be nights when you have like what we would consider normal married relations, yes. which would be, say, The Apprentice, all right, check the TV, right? Oh, that's stupid. Intercourse. Yeah. And then after that, would you say, 
you know what, I fancy sleep well, go next door, or would yeah. you always stay together? Uh, both, I guess. Sometimes it's nice to have a bit of room to starfish out. Uh, look, if I'm working the next day and yes. a certain person snores... Does he snore? I'm not sure if I should share it on TV. Well, no, I snore terribly. My wife has recently taken away earplugs in it's bed. It's a very hard... It's a very... It can be a big problem. Why do men snore? When men snore more than well, women. Apparently, I talk. In your sleep? Yeah. Which is not helpful, because he thinks I talk too much when I'm awake, so... <laughs> there, it's just like, oh, Do you talk... And is God. it coherent conversations you know. about stuff? Um, apparently, I'm unbelievably lucid, and I use really long words. <laughs> Like bovine and um, interlocutory, I use and words that he writes down on and says like, and looks up in the dictionary. Later on. So, hold it, so his, this is a strange household because <laughs> you have two bedrooms. And sometimes you're he's snoring, he stops snoring. You yeah. woke him up with your talking. He's writing down what it is in his dictionary <laughs> to this Yeah, you know, the other thing is that he's an insomniac, and I love sleep. I'm really good at sleep. It's I love sleep. Talent. Sleep's great. And he sometimes takes photos of me asleep. Now this is just that's wrong. Why is it wrong? <laughs> because he just thinks it's so extraordinary that I'm practically an eighth wonder of the world, the amount that I can sleep. And he'll take photographs of you sleeping? Yeah. And where does he put these on the internet? <laughs> where can we see no, Helena sleeping? No, it's very very not um I don't know. But he's does got he ever them. put you in certain poses? Like does he ever, you know, put a wig on you or no, is he white right on your head? He or, has like when done, yeah, no, no, sometimes he's put some of his toys, you know, so I mean <laughs> not those kind of toys. They're very innocent. Like don't the even rabbit. go there, don't go there. <laughs> No. So you're saying, no, no, no. with the like, yeah, yeah. bovine. <laughs> They're like a toy Dalek or something. Tim's got lots oh, of Oh, that's toys. fine then. Yeah. Oh, you're Dalek next to your head for you. Think. You'll wake up terrified. You're like, ah! Oh. <laughs> Exterminate. No, but he, um, no, he's a brilliant photographer, Tim. So he always sees things in funny, you know. So if something occurs, he goes up. Like, and, and where does your little boy sleep? What, I believe which... li he's in Tim's, Tim's bed. But it's not that bad, because it sounds like You're a You're there, there all the time. No, no, but I'm not like, implying you that you've just they dumped are. him. That's yeah. where Billy's room is, and this is my house. But you room. know what? It's funny you picked on them, because in my house, this is the extension we have, and they're there all the time as well. Nine. <laughs> 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 uh, let's talk about your new movie, Helena, because you have a new movie out on the 18th of this month. What's it yeah. called? It's called... Conversations with other women. Uh, and what is the, what is the premise of I've seen isn't. it? There's only one woman and one man, and well, I play the woman. Well, this is what confused me because I thought it would be a yeah. lot of women talking. Yeah, no. And it, and it isn't. No. Did you get that? Did you get it? Do you like it? I liked it, but it was peculiar because it took me a while to get used to the strange way it is thing. shot, which we should explain to people. Yeah. The whole film, or more or less the whole film. Yeah, yeah. It's shot. a split screen. Yeah. So you've got two sides and it's split. I think it's probably better for women because we're, we're better at multitasking, yes. so we're probably better at watching it. Whereas guys, it can at first, it takes a few minutes to get used to it. Just takes you know, to get used to it. You know, the other thing is you probably watch it on telly, I did. and it's much better. It's, you have to watch it on the screen. But here's the thing: so you're watching the, the, the film, and essentially, uh, sometimes you're watching Helena's character talking with the other character, a guy called Aaron plays him, uh, and they're talking, but you see it from different angles. But then sometimes you see like a flashback or another sequence involving someone else, yeah. and it all juxtaposes, and you kind of put it together in your head. It's like a very much an audience-created movie in that yeah, respect. Yeah, you can sort of edit your own movie. Um, but also, it's a portrait of a relationship, a man and a woman, and they meet at this wedding, and then bit by bit you realise that they have a past, and um, it's sort of a relationship, in fact, in two hours. But I, I very much, before we see a clip, I very much liked the character you played. I liked I the love woman. The character. Yeah, she was a, a I liked her. Fantastic part. But she, it's it's a a, part. And it's an unusual part to get a strong character like that, I would have thought. It's just, well, that's why I did it, because I thought this was a great part. It's one of the best parts that I've ever had the chance to play, I think. It was shot in two weeks. Wow. In 13 days, and it was, um, as I say, on, like, on high definition video and it was one of the best most satisfying things that I've done. Uh, you, you look great in that it's a, and, oh, it, and, it, and it looks like it was fun to shoot. It was great fun to shoot and Aaron was brilliant. Well so. you know it's nice to and see films which aren't just blockbusters we love blockbusters yeah. but to see films which are about relationships and real people it makes a nice change. And also and something that's well written yeah, because you, that was beautifully written and it's sort of a weird irony that often in this business the bigger the budget the crap of the writing. Often the case. Yeah. Not the case though in the summer movie which you have a small part in I believe which I'm very much looking forward to. Harry Potter. Harry Potter, that's right. Helena Bonham Carter is taking over the role of Harry Potter from Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, there's you there. Uh, is that you? That's, uh, you're playing a, is it a witch you play in this uh, film? I would say so, yeah. That looks great. And that, but that must be, we're talking about movies that take a long while to shoot, and there's, that must be that one was, of those that films. That took endless. Right? I mean, yeah. that was, I was on that for six weeks and had about five lines, and they cut three. And is that because of what, special effects or the...? Special effects and children. Children always make things longer because they can only work them special hours. So and then um, that's you as well, isn't it? That's me really fed up in my trailer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not in the film. That's just you saying, yeah. please, <laughs> please let me out. Let me film. But it's, uh, but 
but it's quite nice because everybody you know you know who's in it or you've grown up with like all the British you know actors and it's a bit like a rest home for them for yeah, all of us because you've got they Maggie Smith there Maggie and you've Smith, got you got Michael Gambon you've got Ray Fiennes you've got Jason I I mean everybody so you want to the whole great cast it's fantastic yeah. and then you just all wait around your trailers for hours and then ever so often they wheel you out for a shot and then they put you back in but can't you all sit around together playing Sudoku or having we a do. chat or yeah, getting yeah, a chat or something DVDs Arm watching wrestling. films chatting gossiping talking about other people in the business you having know. nice long lady chats about handbags Lots of bags. Bags. you see other actors male actors do lady chats do they mm. you know what that is don't you <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Helena, lovely to see you. Thank you so much for coming yeah. on the show. I'm going to leave you with a little taste of Helena in the Harry Potter movie. This is the trailer, the movie which we're very excited about as well. But do, if you get the chance, go and see conversations with other women because, as Helena said, it's unusual we that you talk get about movies. Sweeney, did we? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> what? what? Did we talk about Sweeney? What? No, no, we didn't. We talked a bit about Sweeney. Yeah. Did we? Yeah. You've got the worst memory of any <laughs> guest I've ever had on the show. I, I can forgive really you for not memory. wanting to talk about Room with a View. It was 20 years ago. Really we were talking about Sweeney Todd five oh. minutes ago. How can you have forgotten that? Are you sure we did? Mrs. Lovett. We talked about you being Mrs. Lovett when you were a child. Oh, yes, child. when I was 11. Yes, okay, it's coming exactly. back. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder he's got a separate it. bedroom. <laughs> uh, okay, thank you so much. Yes, I know you can't remember it, but trust me, you... you <laughs> You've been a charming guest. Thank you for coming on. Ladies and gentlemen, the lovely Helena Bonham Carter. That was so lovely. Thank you. Thank it was a joy. True, my brain is gone. Yeah, it's aged. Thank you for coming. Yeah. It was lovely. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>